So make sure uh, before you start, uh, we start our class, your microphone is already off. I think the first thing you should, uh, you should do once you join a class is to switch off your microphone. It goes without saying, switch off your microphone. The next thing that you're supposed to know is that uh, you're supposed to sit where there is uh, absence of noise, a place where it is silent. You don't sit in the midst of uh, animals. They are making all sorts of noises and so on and so forth. So avoid such things. You're not going to learn. You're not learning. You're just uh, lying to yourself that you're learning. Next, ensure that you have enough internet. Is it two, 50 bundles? 50 M, is it 50 MBs? Unafikiri utamaliza nao darasa ama 10 MBs. Ni MBs ama ni kilobytes. All those things, eh? Ensure that you have enough bundles. The gadget that you're using is, um, is the one that is capable of uh, sustaining you for the period of, the, the, the period that you're going to have in learning. Cha kuchukua simu, unaweka two bundles, inaanza kuwa moto. Moto kwa moto, you are sweating, uh, so on and so forth. Eh? Again, ensure that uh, what else? That uh, you are taking some notes. Make sure that you're taking some notes. Notes are very important because I might say something and you jot it down. And I might even give you the notes later, my notes. And you might not even understand them. But when you go through your personal notes, vis-a-vis uh, -vis my notes, then you realize that uh, it's becoming understandable. So don't sit at home as, as though you are watching a thrilling horror movie, or as though you are watching the latest mix, uh, the, the latest DJ mixtape by Demakufu. No, that is not learning. What you are doing is you are listening to music. You are listening to music. So ensure that uh, you have a book, you have a pen, and you are ready to learn. Now I will start my class by saying this, that last week we did what is called a verbal communication. And we said that verbal communication is communication through word of mouth. And we said that one distinct characteristic between animals and human beings is that human beings can talk, animals cannot talk. Even though they communicate through voice or through sound, that is not talking. So you cannot say my dog is talking or my cow is talking or my cat is talking. No, they do not talk. What they do is they communicate through sound. They communicate through sound. They communicate through producing sound. For example, if your dog is sick, it will produce a certain sound that will help you know that this dog is not feeling well. If it is hungry, it will produce a certain sound. If it sees a thief or an unknown visitor, it will start barking. And then you will know that there is something that is not right in this particular compound. So the distinct characteristic between human beings and animal is that human being can speak, animals cannot speak. Whether they are dying, they, they cannot speak. Even though we have watched some things from, uh, what do we call it? Uh, American God's Talent. I, I was once watching American God's Talent and I saw a, a dog that it is speaking. That is not speaking. That is not speaking. So uh, that is it. Eh? So we looked about. Uh, we looked at uh, verbal communication, and we said it is uh, communication through word of mouth that everybody communicates. And uh, we also looked at the importance of verbal communication, and we also looked at uh, the disadvantages of verbal communication because anything that has got advantages, definitely it has got disadvantages. So then today we are going to look at. Nonverbal communication. 
Today we will look at nonverbal communication. By the end of this lesson, then you should be doing activities. Remember I said those activities are very crucial. Do those activities. I don't want you to regret in the future because you have not done those activities. Do those activities. And once we are done with activities, I will not go back to them. So don't you dare call me to tell me, open for me that activity. I did not do it. No, I will not go back. So we are moving forward. We are not looking back. So if you don't do activities, just know that your final marks is being reduced. Either by five marks or by two marks or by whatever marks. So be ready and do those activities within the, uh, the time limit that you've been given so that uh, at the end of the semester, you'll be the one, you'll be among the people who will be very happy about the grades that they will get. Now, therefore, let me start my class. I will start by sharing my screen. A question. Yes. About the last class, the assignment you gave, we are listening. Uh, were we supposed to, uh, to talk about nonverbal or verbal? Because the question is talking about nonverbal. If the question is talking about nonverbal, then you're supposed to answer it like that way. Sawa, sawa. If you come across sorry, in a Kuriza verbal, just do the way the question tells you. That assignment is already marked. It's only that it is withheld from your side. If I can give you the permission, you will actually see what you got. But that one, I'm going to unleash it towards the end of the semester. That you can see from quiz one to the last quiz what you have gotten. And you can do your simple mathematics. Then you can you can decide either to transnight or you can decide to take, I mean, to, to, to have a very good night's sleep. Kuna watu wata transnight wakiona maxes out. And also, if you can the last day that it can help you, if you did not put more effort during the learning session, don't think that when you transnight, that it will make that much difference. It won't. So, uh, just like a farmer, you cannot plant today and then you expect the seed to grow tomorrow. You have to put more effort. Uh, for you to have it uh, during the right time. So let me share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. My screen is, uh, let me confirm from some individuals. Uh, I'm also sorry, can you see my screen? Amos. Kiona unaita mtu hivyo na hajibu. Mtu anaweza kuwa hapo na biashara kadha wa kadha. Labda anauza mandazi hapo kando. Na anatusikiza kama vile tunasikiza football kwa radio. Manchester United versus Arsenal. Wewe so, unangoja tukusikia goal. Ah uh, Kamadi Imbasa, can you hear me? Uh, can you see my screen? Kamadi Imbasa, Imbasa, not Imbasa, but Imbasa. Oh, I'm not sure what you're doing. Esther Maina, can you see my screen? Hakuna esta mwingine ni CIT. Yes. 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 Bangua chomba. Hawa wote ni watu wa CIT. Anyway. Let me do my job. So let's look at uh, an unverbal communication. So when you talk about nonverbal communication, uh, nonverbal communication is any communication that is communicated uh, without using words. Huh? It's any communication that is communicated 
without the use of words. That's what we call nonverbal communication, communication without the use of words. Sometimes it is referred to as what we call the silent language. I've heard people saying that uh, action speaks louder than words. That if somebody doesn't want you in his house, that person will not tell you get out, but will start showing you some actions. Maybe you used to chat all night long. Now the chat has gone down. You don't chat, you only say hi, you eat silently, after eating silently, you do your chores silently, and then you go and sleep silently. That means that that person doesn't want you in that house. So that's how it is. So that's why we say that silent language, it is usually referred to as silent language. Uh, Nonverbal communication, again, is information we communicate without using words. You don't use words, you just communicate. And a lot of nonverbal communication is usually unintentional. A hundred, actually, we can say 90%. 90% of nonverbal communication is not intentional, it is non intentional. But people are not, when you talk about unintentional, we mean that people usually are not even aware that they are sending uh, these messages. They are sending these messages. For example, before we started this class, there is a lady called Talia. And Talia, we could see your house, how it looks like. We could see even the guy who is disturbing you there. And we can actually get a lot of information from the way you are living. You don't have to say much. You can look at the people around you and we can tell what kind of a person you are. There is a saying that says this, eh? show me your friends and I'll tell you, the kind of a person you are. If your friends are drunkards, if your friends are drunkards, definitely, you might also be a drunkard. If they are thieves, definitely you might also be a thief because birds of the same feather flock together. You cannot say that I'm a pastor and uh, all the friends that surround you are thieves. They are drunkards. If you don't change those drunkards to become, <laughs> to change their behavior, then definitely they are going to change you to become one of them. And that's why we say, if you cannot beat them, you join them. So that is it. So a lot of nonverbal communication is usually unintentional. Like today you are dressed in a very fun, in a different way. You don't know whether you are sending any kind of information. Sometimes we dress when we, are, when we are going to class or when we are going to visit a friend. You don't know whether you are sending any information. So you, say, you, you put on a tight dress and uh, specifically you are dressing to be smart. You don't have any intention of making anybody go mad when they see you. But now the message that you are sending becomes very different, becomes very different. So most of the communication that is nonverbal is usually unintentional. We do not intend to communicate that message. We do not intend to do that. Eh? So people are not aware most of the times when they are sending these kind of messages. Like for example, you are tired. You have seen these people uh, in rural areas, how they walk. Wakiwa wameweka mikono kwa mikono yote miwili kwa nyuma. You are walking like that in the streets of Nairobi. Umeshika mikono yako nyuma na you are on uh, this, high, uh, this, this avenue, Moi Avenue. What does that tell people around you? You might not be aware that you are doing that, but the message that you are sending when you are walking with all your hands at the back, or something like that, eh? then you are sending a certain message. The way you even sit, the way you eat, some people eat while talking. Michelle is in a domo, you are talking, people are, they are having their food, some particles are falling on other people's food, 
your hands are dirty or you are eating with your hands eh na kule meja kwa mdomo mchele alafu mkono huu mwingine huko kwa sahani bado and you are talking it sends a different message to to other people and you might not even be aware that you are sending a certain message to other people and so on and so forth like where we live it communicates it communicates a lot the arrangement of the furniture the seats maybe some of us when we get uh, to your houses the first thing that you meet on the door is sufuria ambayo ilipika ugali jana maybe the first thing that you will meet on the door is something else nguo za jana ambazo hauku something like that so the way you live the way your furniture is organized and the way even the way we write even the way we write when you look at the, the way someone has organized his notes you can tell the kind of people that they are some people write in short form and you can't even tell what they have written but you will find a very organized person headlines he put them in red in red eh? write them in red the subheading in black uh, any point that is clear he underlines the point and so on and so forth you can say that that person is organized even your handwriting talks more about you even your hand handwriting it talks more about you and you might not even tell we have been marking exams at one of the lecturers at the university and we have we have been marking exams and when you're marking a booklet you can say this one will get zero because the handwriting is bad the way he has arranged his points are it's very wrongly number 1 the question starts from number 1 you are starting from the last number eh swali imeanza number 1 a b c d you you are starting with number 1 d then you go to number 1 a then you go to number 1 c that one shows how disorganized you are and truly speaking you might find even this person doesn't score very well because number 1 is very disorganized So I don't want to talk so much about the nonverbals we will look at them later as we proceed what I want to look at is the differences between uh, verbal and nonverbal communication and I'm going to go a bit faster unless unless there is a misunderstanding then you can lift your hands and uh, ask for a question or a question now verbal and nonverbal communication they differ in different ways they differ in terms of environment they differ in terms of feedback they differ in terms of continuity and they differ in terms of channel control structure and acquisition and so on and so forth number one, let's look at the environment nonverbal communication differ in terms of the environment what do we mean we mean that unlike much of the verbal communication unlike word of mouth nonverbal communication can take place when we are not we are we are not around for people to get an impression of us you're being told for example our homes our home tells us more about us i i said this eh? where we live maybe when you open the door and you have a visitor the first thing that we meet on the door we will be your pants and i mean pants i mean surwari ndefu iwe fupi iwe yandani iwe i mean that that is the first thing that we will meet on there on the door some people when you open or when you go to your to their homes you will see that everything is put where it is supposed to be the seat the dining hall uh, the tv the television set everything is put where it is supposed to be there is a lot, a lot of i mean there is enough lighting there is Huh? The, the, the what we call the, the the scent there is a very good scent but some houses when the moment you pop in you might think you are in a in a in a in a, in a damp site there is a lot of all sort of manner of bad odor and so on and so forth and you might not even want to go there so our homes speak much about us even when we are not around so that is one differences between uh, verbal and nonverbal communication 
Secondly, it's feedback. When you talk about feedback, we give a lot of nonverbal feedback. We give a lot of nonverbal feedback. We show interest in someone by doing what? By smiling. We are in class. A boy meets a girl. The lecturer is busy teaching. You are smiling with the, the girl is seated toward, I mean, uh, at the back. You, you are seated in front. And you cannot concentrate with what is being taught. Kicho you, you are smiling or something or shouting to impress maybe the lady at the back. Now that one shows that you are interested with that person. We give a lot of nonverbal feedback. When you call your lecturer at 3 a.m. and he doesn't pick, that's a nonverbal feedback. He tells you that that person is sleeping, stop disturbing. Or when you call someone, a friend of yours, that you had some conflict with, and he's not picking his call, your calls, then it means that that person is not interested with you. So those are some of the things you are talking about. Facial expression and body postures show most of our emotional responses. Sometimes you look at someone and you ask them, why are you angry? Why do you look like that? What is happening? What is wrong? Why do you ask them such questions? You ask them such questions because you have looked at their facial expression. <laughs> when you make a noise, what I can do is to put you in a waiting room. So Kiano met crucial waiting room, do I have any noise maker? So that is it. Feedback. Nonverbal, uh, we give, we get we give a lot of nonverbal feedback. Even how you sit, you give a lot of nonverbal feedback. The way you look at someone or the way you stare at people, it you give a lot of nonverbal feedback. Now, suppose you are seated or you are called for a party, or maybe you are called for a meeting in town and you meet in a hotel. Somebody is talking to you. Your eyes are gazed on a certain guard. And then all of a sudden, somebody is telling you, hey, what, what? and then you are. I mean, uh, he's telling you, can, are you listening to me? Mpaka na kugongo, I say, hey, what are you saying? That is nonverbal feedback, that you are not concentrating. Number three difference between the two, verbal and nonverbal, is that unlike nonverbal communication, which begins and ends with words, like this class will begin, has started with words, and it will end with words. Five, my final remark. Nonverbal communication is continuous. Nonverbal communication does not end, it does not do what? It does not start and it does not end with anything. It is continuous. Then the, uh, the next point, the channel. Nonverbal communication uses more than one channel. Nonverbal communication uses more than one channel. As you cheer, for example, for your team, maybe this is Arsenal versus uh, the Blues, Chelsea. And when you see Chelsea that they have scored a goal, you will yell, you will jump up and down as they score or as they play, you score. I mean, as they play you, you do what? You yell, you jump up and down and so on and so forth. Here, you are using what? You are using the channel of sight. You'll be using the channel of sound. And you'll be using, uh, yeah, you'll be using the channel of sight and sound in your nonverbal communication. Remember, sound does not entail communication. No, no, no. When you talk about sound, sound does not entail talking. So when you hear a certain sound, it does not mean that that is talking. Sound and talking are, talk are totally different things. Talking is when you say something that is making sense. When you produce sound, is we can relate that sound to either pain, to either to either what, to either pain, to either happiness or something of the sort. 
Then control. The next differences is unlike verbal communication, where we can choose our words, we have very little control of our nonverbal communication. In verbal communication, when you're talking using the words of mouth, you can easily choose your words. But nonverbal communication, you have very little control over the nonverbals. So our emotional response is one nonverbal behavior where we have least amount of control. And then six, the sixth point here is that nonverbal communication follows no specific sequence. It has no sequence. It occurs unconsciously. It occurs unconsciously. For example, when you are sleeping and you are snoring, you are snoring loudly. That's an unverbal communication. That's an unverbal communication. Or maybe somebody has invited you for a dinner and you are yawning aimlessly without even closing your mouth. That is an unverbal communication. Or somebody has invited you for a dinner and you have eaten a lot of meat. You have eaten a lot of choma. And instead of asking for a toothpick, you are using your fingers to remove the pieces of meat that are stuck on your teeth. Umefungua mdomo yote, unatoa nyama na kidole. That's an unverbal communication. And it tells us so much about you. So therefore we are saying it lacks a formal structure as opposed to verbal communication that usually follows the rules of grammar. Then lastly, we are looking at acquisition. Acquisition is a lot of, there is a, a, a lot of formal rules for verbal communication like grammar. They are taught in a structured formal environment like schools. Like there, is a, there are some students here, I teach uh, introduction to media house management. We run them in school, a classroom, structure. But when you talk about nonverbal communication, these ones you learn them from the streets, from in any informal setting. Like there is this sign that we usually take whenever we are taking a photograph, you will see people forming this sign, V. V in Amanisha Aje. Maybe somebody can tell us. What does it mean? What does it mean? Can we have somebody telling us when you are taking a photograph and all your fingers have formed a V? What does it mean? You are shy. Let me show you a picture here. Chilling. You are chilling. Yeah. Let me show you what I mean. You are taking a photograph and you are doing like this to the, the guys that you can see there. Hmm? What does that mean? Nyamai. Nyamai Kinyai. What does that mean? You can see in your screen, I have shared. There are so many people there, you can see how they are taking their photos with their eyes with their hands forming a V side. What does that mean? That one might represent either chilling or either peace. Peace. That one is called a, a, a victory sign. It's a victory sign. So maybe it might be having some, uh, some different communication depending on 
where you are coming from. But we learn nonverbal. Where did you learn about it? Did you learn them in class? Lewis, where did you learn that from? Where did you learn that from? Or maybe you can ask or change or call. Will you submit your happy? Come to. Even when you lift your middle finger towards another person, where did you come to learn that? Natu anapenda sana kuinua kidole ya katikati ya mkono wao. Mutu wa kikukosea unamuanyesha kidole ya katikati ya mkono. Where did you learn from? In class or in the streets? Most likely you learned those things in the streets. Somebody anatuharibia notes hapa. You are very idle. We we'll just kick you out of this class. And I think I should give a, uh, where is uh, this lady? What's her name? Uh, my assistant, I should give you some rights. You kick her out or him out. Let me see whether I can give you some rights to do that. This lady, her name is uh, Bina. Bina, I don't know. I don't know that I can give you some right, or I don't know that you are in class in the first place. Yeah. Bina, can you speak so that I can see you? Yeah. And compare rights. Ukileta nyev nyev na kutoa inje bio bio. Let me look for you. Let me give you my rights. You're now the <laughs> you are now the host. Let me make you the host. Bina is now the host. As I continue with my presentation. So acquisition, eh? So a lot of nonverbal communication. Uh, we acquire them from the streets. We acquire them from the streets. So be nice if you see somebody disturbing us, any noise, just kick that person. Don't even put them in the waiting room. Kick them out of this room. Let us meet next week, a day like today, and a time like now. So that is it. And as there is a question, before I go to importance or functions of nonverbal communication, can I have the questions? Questions? So ukiweka microphone yako on you have been to content with. Anione unamuingilia. Tapelekana na wewe ndio sana. I've given her full permission. In fact, she's the host. She can even kick me out. So importance of function of nonverbal communication. Number 1, we have various importance of nonverbal communication. There are four functions of nonverbal communication according to the notes that I have. Number one is complementing. You're going to realize that uh, some of the nonverbal cues complement the verbal message by adding to it its meaning. For example, you can pat someone you offended at the back as you say sorry to them, or as you say sorry to him or her, to show how sorry you are. You can hug people or somebody to show that you really, to comfort them, to comfort them, to show that you really understand what is going on in their lives. So we can complement 
or we use a nonverbal to complement the verbal communication. Secondly, we use the nonverbals to do what? In regulating, <clears throat> we use them in regulating. In other words, we are saying it can also be used to regulate the verbal communication. For example, uh, those who work in the offices, or maybe you are coming to see Mr. David in the office. And then we had hired a very lengthy talk, maybe concerning class attendance. Then you come and realize, because time, we don't have all the time to discuss about uh, maybe, for example, you are your class attendance or maybe assignment or those things, you see me arranging my desk or you see me packing my, my bag, packing things in my bag. It simply tells you that that is the end of conversation. So you are regulating, it can be used for regulating. Thirdly, substituting. We use nonverbal communication to replace the verbal communication. For example, you are along the uh, streets of Nairobi, Moy Avenue. Your friend, you see your friend on the other side of Mount Kenya University. And you, you are on the other side of, uh, the other side of, uh, what do you call it? The other side of Kentik. You don't shout at them, you wave at them, something of the sort. But some people are very stupid. They will wave at them as they run towards them. And before you notice or you realize, you've been kicked by a moving vehicle. So nonverbal behavior can also replace the verbal communication. And then the lastly, the other function of uh, nonverbal communication, it can also be based to accent. emphasize or to reinforce the verbal messages. Like those people who are very good or those people who watch uh, what we call uh, football. Those people who watch football. Those people who watch football, you realize that uh, you might hear the what? This guy called uh, the coach telling people time is up, lifting his hand and forming a letter T. Nana kwambia time up, time up, something like that. Eh? So you can see it is also used to do what? For assenting. For example, a lecturer uses a strong and firm voice when asking the class not to be late for the next lecture. He uses a very firm voice. He also uses a very firm voice when he's telling you to attain or to, to attend to your quizzes and uh, the forums or the discussion that has been put there. That there are what we call characteristics of nonverbal communication. Characteristics of nonverbal communication, unless there is a question, allow me to go to nonverbal communication. That is the characteristics. Number one is that none. I'm going to just mention and uh, the rest, the details you will read on your own. Nonverbal communication or nonverbal behavior always has a communication value. It always has a communication value. That one you will read in details. Number two, nonverbal communication is very powerful. That's why we say it that akusukuzai uh, hakwambi toka, or action speaks louder than words. Yeah? So nonverbal communication is very powerful. In fact, I was told this, if you want to punish someone, maybe you, you live with somebody, if you want to punish that person, and maybe he has, uh, he has been uh, offending you, he has been making you angry. Just keep quiet, never talk to that person. That person, you have punished him enough. You will punish him enough to a point that 
he will come and say, sorry for what you have or for what he or she has done to you. So the only nonverbal communication is silence. So silence is a nonverbal communication because this person will not know what you are thinking. He will not know what you are planning. He will not know exactly what is happening. So the moment you keep quiet to that person or you just don't talk to that person, that person becomes, I will realize and will come and apologize to you. Kwambi went to Nyamazia Mzazi. Sabuli Nyimwa Mahamri, Kama Mandazi. Wewe ukamua ku, nuna kama Mahamri yenyewe. Kwambi ufanya hivyo. Nonverbal behavior is ambiguous. Another thing is nonverbal behavior is very ambiguous. Sometimes we might misinterpret, we, mis we might misinterpret messages that are sent through nonverbal cues. For example, you work in an office. Say, for example, you work in an office. And uh, before you go to the office, you get to the office, maybe this is Monday morning, or maybe Wednesday morning, you have had some challenges getting to the office. And so you get to the office and you don't say hi as you used to. You are used to saying hi to your colleagues. So you walk directly to your office, to your desk, and you start arranging uh, maybe files, start making things clear so that you can start your day. People might think that you are, you are ignoring them. Other people might think, people might think differently for, the, for your reaction or uh, for the reaction that you showed them. And they don't know how you had a very rough day coming to work. So sometimes nonverbal behavior is very ambiguous. It's very ambiguous. Like when you call a friend whom you are not, you are not in terms, you are not in terms with, and refuses to take your calls, you might <clears throat> jump into conclusion that that friend of yours doesn't want anything to do with you. And maybe his phone was far from his reach. So therefore, when you're talking about nonverbal communication, it can create a different message. For example, when we yawn in class, when we yawn in class, it doesn't mean that we are hungry. It doesn't, sometimes you are tired. When you yawn in class, sometimes you are hungry. Somebody might translate that you didn't have enough sleep at night and so on and so forth. So people might take in, uh, might, 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 might translate the nonverbal messages wrongly. Fourthly, nonverbal communication primarily expresses attitudes. It primarily expresses attitudes. For example, for example, this is a physical class. You come to my class and you are coming to my class one hour, 20 minutes late, or even 40 minutes late. And then I chase you out of my class. How will you react? Some of you will walk in protest and they will make sure that they bang the door. That's nonverbal communication. To express their attitude towards maybe being sent out of the class for their coming late or for them attending that class late. So it, it, it uh, primarily expresses attitude. And then lastly, you can say that much of nonverbal communication is culture bound. Much of nonverbal behavior is a culture bound. For example, there is a, there is a strong argument in African context that when, you are, when an old person is talking to you in some culture, in some cultures, when an old person is talking to you, you don't look at them directly on the face. Apart from that, we know very well eh, that shaking your legs in an interview or maybe in class, it shows nervousness. That's an unverbal. And we all know sometimes that dressing Dressing officially or dressing a suit and a tie, it shows official. It shows that you are official. Now, those are cultures. 
you can even dress a very good, you can even have a good shirt and a very good trouser without tie. And you are, you are very official, something like that. So you're going to realize that some, 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 uh, some uh, nonverbal behavior are usually culture bound. Let's read what is, what, what is in the notes. For example, there is a strong agreement that uh, about facial expression represents happiness, about uh, which facial expression represents happiness, about which facial expression represents fear, which one represents anger, and so on and so forth. You might be silent, and maybe you are silent for nothing. And then somebody tells you that you are not happy. So that is what we mean. In African, uh, in many African culture, you're being told the distance may be larger than in Western culture. When you talk about distance, distance also communicate. Distance communicate. How does distance communicate? For example, we have different types of distances. We have intimate, intimate space. We call them spaces. Eh? Intimate space is the distance that you keep between you and your loved one. If you have a child, if you have a brother or sister, the distance that you keep is usually known as the intimate space, even when you are seated. Then there is what we call the public space or the personal space. The personal space is the space, your own space as an individual. Or maybe we can call it the private space. Like it is wrong for somebody to, to do what? to go into your bedroom because that is your private space or that is your personal space. Then we have, uh, there are different spaces, public space, the space that you keep when you're speaking to, to the public, like when you're giving a speech, that space is known as public space and space communicates a lot by the way. It communicates a lot. Like you can be seated with somebody in a hotel and then somebody comes and tells us eh, the way those people are seated and how close they were, those ones are not brothers and sisters. Those ones, they are more than a brother and a sister. Like even in the office, there is the space that you keep between you and your bosses and your colleagues. Huh? If you go against the space and you become so close, my friend, it becomes something else. Eh? So then we are going to look at types of nonverbal communication. That one is your assignment. I think uh, there is an assignment that I have put there about, uh, about what? About, uh, about types of nonverbal communication. Like we have paralanguage. Paralanguage is a type of nonverbal communication and paralanguage is the way we say something. For example, if your father calls you, maybe he's in another room and he calls you, you can gauge from the pitch of voice, from how loud he's calling you, from the tonal variation that he's angry or he's happy. You can even decide, let me extend five minutes and watch this program, depending on how he's calling you. But there is a time he will call you, you not even want to extend even one second. You rush there immediately. So paralanguage is the way we say something. For example, uh, I've given you an example. If a father calls a son and so on and so forth. Again, uh, when you talk about rate, rate is a paralanguage is part of paralanguage. And rate is the speed at which one speaks, which also can have an effect on the way the message is being received. Like for example, you have people from certain communities that speaks very fast, that you think they are communicating. Kumbe, we have gotten nothing. I don't want to, to, to talk about the, the community. We also have pitch. Pitch refers to how high or how low the voice is. And it can determine whether a voice sounds pleasant or unpleasant. Like when you tell somebody, come here, 
come here. And when you tell somebody, come here, it shows that something is wrong because that is what we call pitch, the highness or lowness of voice. When you call somebody with your voice very low, come here, come here, that person, it totally speaks something different as opposed to when you shout, come here. It, show, it shows that you are ordering them to come or you're ordering that person to come. So the pitch that you use when speaking to somebody also uh, has got effect on how they are going to translate your message. The volume again, remember we are in paralanguage and paralanguage includes what? We have said, number one, the rate, the rate is the speed. Number two, pitch, how high or how low your voice is. Number three, the volume. And we are saying as far as the volume is concerned is that uh, the message can also be affected by the volume. That is how loudly we speak, how loudly we speak. So a loud voice is fine if it is appropriate to the speaker's purpose and it is not used at all times. The same is true of a soft voice. If you use a soft voice, then it is always good. Like for example, I'm in class and this class has got 200 students. I will use loud voice. And that, the reason as to why I'm using the, I mean, the loudest voice is for the person seated at the back to hear me. We also told that the same is true of a soft voice. When you use a soft voice, it also communicates much. Like when you're talking to a lady, we mostly use what we call soft voices. If you shout at them, then they, they, they run away from you. Hmm? And, or maybe you're talking to children. You don't use a very high voice when you're speaking to children. We usually lower our tone, even when we are angry. Because some of them will start crying when you use a very high voice or volume when speaking to them, they will start crying. Then we have vocal fillers. Vocal fillers is you listen to someone's voice and you can tell this person is angry. You listen to someone's voice huh? and you can say this one is lying to me. Huh? And so on and so forth. You can even listen to someone's voice and you can say this person is suffering. Like when you, 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 got, you, uh, you call a friend of yours and maybe he's talking in a very low tone, you ask them, are you feeling okay on phone? You can even tell whether somebody has just woken up when you call them. There is a way you talk. Huh? Uh, then we have body movement. We have body movement. Number two is body movement. Number one, we have looked at para language. We also have body movement. I think we call it kinesics. Body movement is kinesics. And uh, there are so many things eh? you will read on body movement. The eye message. Eye message is also part of the body movement. The way you look at someone. And I, 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 I would want to congratulate the ladies because they are very good at reading eye messages. Ladies are very good at reading eye messages. For men, we are very poor in that. Eh? Yeah, a lady can tell you that a certain lady is in love with somebody by looking at the eye movement, by looking at the smile, the non-verbal, and so on and so forth. Huh? Huh? And so on and so forth. Also, when you're talking about uh, body language, we are also talking about clothing. How do you clothe when you are going for a date? Do you clothe as though you are going for a, for a bikini party? Eh? You've been called to go to Mombasa. That's the time you are looking for your, your trench coat and your boots. 
and uh ile 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 ni naitwa namna gani your fluffy zip fluffy jacket and so on and so forth the clothing that we wear communicates much uh, of the things that we are going to do but some people do the opposite you've been called for a dinner date that's the time you are looking for for a very tight cloth that uh, that does what that starts very early and ends very late and you are showing us all the parts the seven wonders of the world because you are going for a dinner date it communicates totally different it gives totally different message now suppose it is the, the first dinner date you are meeting a man that man might 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 translate that message totally different he might have a very negative picture of about about you if at all you are a lady the same case happened to men you've gone to see a lady somewhere she has called you for a dinner date because they do especially yao wanaume ambao wanapenda kubeba tu bag kidogo na anakabeba kama kama face hapa mbele kwa kifua eh or maybe you've gone to pay a, a dowry and that is how you present yourself with those small shoes i mean those small and tight uh jeans that looks like they are falling but they are not falling and so on and so forth eh? then uniform also communicates then you also have uh those ones are then the, we have space and distance space and distance the, we remember we talked about intimate space the space that we maintain between ourselves and our loved ones and then we have personal space and this is the distance we keep most often when we are in casual or personal conversation for example when you are talking to your boss uh, that is usually known as personal space and then we have uh, social distance we all know what social distance is i think covid-19 has taught us what social distance is uh, and then we have public distance if you are giving a speech to the public the distance that you maintain when uhuru kenyatta is giving a speech what is the distance between him and the public now that is the distance then we have uh, touch touch communicates the way you touch your friend when you are seated or maybe when you are walking along the streets of nairobi how you hold their hands eh? how we kiss babies eh? how we hold hands how we hug family members and how you hug your loved one it is totally different those hugs are totally different how you hug your girlfriend and how you hug your sister we can actually tell that that one is not a cousin that one is not a, a sister that one is a girlfriend or that one is a wife we can tell that falls under what we call touch also time we also have time time communicates a lot like there is time for everything there is time for everything and time uh, especially when you go to the western countries they value time not like they value time not like in africa they value time a lot eh? like for example if a class is starting at 8 everybody obeys that time in african context this class especially was supposed to start at 2 but we started it at 2:30 because we always say that time is african time which is not right the best thing is to value time just as the western countries does so there is time for everything there is a time you look at your time and you say now it is time to go and pray now it is time to go and sleep now it is time to go and watch a movie because time is also an unverbal also communicates non verbally so then you are told how do we improve your non verbal communication it is very difficult to improve your non verbal communication unless you have control of an non verbal communication and we said that most of the time we communicate non verbally not knowing but sometimes 
we communicate non verbally no you are called for a dinner date and you choose a certain type of dress because you have an intention then you are communicating non verbally so we can change those that we are aware of but those that we are not aware of then it is difficult to change the non verbal communication So it is not very easy to change, fortunately. And most of us don't need it. Touch the serious. <laughs> so it's very difficult to change our nonverbal communications unless we are aware of our nonverbals. How difficult. Somebody is making noise and Bina is here. Bina, someone is making noise. We should act on that person. Any question? I will stop at that point because uh, I think we have learned so much. Uh, any question? Any question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that saying yes? Do we have any question as far as nonverbal communication is concerned? Yes, Zilpa. Uh, so when talking on nonverbal communication, what is mm. the difference between pitch and volume? Volume. And pitch. What's the difference there? Pitch is the highness or lowness of voice. Pardon, pardon. Pitch is the highness or lowness of voice. While when you talk about volume, volume is all about uh, the sound, the sound. Eh? There is voice and there is sound. Like when you have, let's say, let's put it this way. Yeah? You have a, a system in the house. Let's say, for example, you have a home theater in the house. You talk of increase the volume. You don't say increase the, the pitch. No, it is increasing the volume. Now the loudness. Volume is about the loudness or the opposite of loudness is The loudness of voice, that is volume. While pitch and is loudness. The opposite of loud is? Quietness. <laughs> the opposite of loud is what? Lowness. Hmm? Now the opposite of loudness, because you don't want to answer, you go and find out the opposite of loudness and the opposite of loudness. But pitch is the highness or lowness of, vo of voice. That's any word. Yes. The only thing that we know here is reduce the volume, increase the volume. <laughs> So that is it. I hope I've answered your question. Excuse me, Mr. Miner. Yes. Since we're talking about nonverbal communication, are there any advantages and disadvantages of it? Of course, we have seen the advantages of nonverbal communication. When we were looking at uh, their use as a Number one, it is used as it is important. That's one advantage. It reinforces the nonverbal, uh, the, 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 the what? The verbal communication. Number two, we said advantage number two is that it, uh, it, it can be used together with, it can be used together with verbal communication for more understanding. There are so many advantages of nonverbal communication.
There are so many advantages and they are in the notes. Any question? Cecilia and Bive, Maswari. Cecilia. There's another question. Yes. It is about the portal learning. About the portal. About the portal, what about it? About the activities. Are they the same as the assignments or? Activities is, uh, we have assignment, we have quiz. Uh -huh. We have uh, the discussion forum. And any other thing, those are the activities. I can even tell you to have uh, what we call what we call a wiki a wiki what to, 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 to contribute into a wiki. That's an activity. Activities are things that we do them after classes. Like after this class, there will be a discussion forum and there will be a quiz. Those are activities. Now when you talk about assignments and quizzes, those are coursework. Those are coursework. When I talk about assignment one, assignment two, quiz one, quiz, no, cut one and cut two, those are coursework. And for that, I would like to remind those who have not uh, done the quiz what? Assignment one, that you have eight days remaining to do that assignment. So that assignment uh, will be expiring a day like, uh, is it tomorrow? I'm not so sure, but you have eight days eight days. So wale ambao tu nafikiri bado tuko na wiki mbili, wacha ni kukumbusha kwa mba huko na siku nane sasa zimebaki. Zilikuwa zimebaki siku kumi na nane, zimebaki sasa siku nane. So make sure that you, I have seen that 16 of us have done that assignment, that assignment which is okay. Remember when that assignment is closed, sibi utavanya nini. Wengine wanangojia tu ile dakika ya mwisho. Zimebaki dakika tano. Unaingia katika mtandao, una copy vitu na niwekea hapo. My friend, utaona cha mtema kuri. Hapo utaanguka. Tota mi nitaingia kwa mtandao ni kutafutie marks. Unajua ni kiingia kwa mtandao what, mean, what that means. It means that you get a zero. That's what it means. Because that is not your work. You've just copy pasted someone's work. In short, we call it plagiarism. Or in other words, in a layman's language, we call it academic theft. So you are therefore an academic thief. Hata kwa masomo kuna wezi. Na wewe utakuwa mwizi mmoja. Unaingia kwa mtandao, unachukua vitu ambao vimeandikwa na wengine, unavipachika. Mr. Maina Amak. Who are you? You are an academic thief. And I will treat you as one. Tukipata mwizi kwa our community, tunachomanga ye na tae. Sasa ye nitakuchoma ki max. Nitakufinya. Nitakupea sufuri. So don't be an academic thief. Hacha kuwa mwizi wa masomo. Pia kuna wezi wa, ma wa mapenzi na wezi utofauti, utofauti. So usiwai kukubali kukua na uhusiano na jina lolote linaitwa mwizi. Na unajua unaanzanga hivi ukiwa mdogo. Sasa hivi unafanya certificate, unaenda unafanya diploma, unafanya degree, unashikiwa huko kwa 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 masters. Juu sasa umekuwa mwizi sugu wa masomo. Huh? Unashikiwa huko ukifanya masters. Inakuwa nullified yote. So afadhali nikufunze saa hii. Huh? So samaki nitamkunja angali mbichi, akiwa saa hii hapa mbichi. Kwa saa zile umegra, umekua machua academically, umekua mwizi machua. I don't want us to get to that point. Any question? Okay, my question is on the discussion forum that you have posted earlier. The discussion forum, that's where we are going. That's why I'm asking for questions now before we proceed to the discussion forum. Any question? 
I hope it is well understood. So then, if there is no question, allow me to go to the portal. Today's notes, nonverbal communication, they are already unleashed. I've unleashed yeah, those notes. Sir, what about attendance? My friend, let me finish. What about, oh, sorry. So today's notes have already been unleashed, have been unleashed. You can download them as many times as you wish, anywhere and anyhow, they are there. Secondly, there is what we call activities. So there is activity 3.2, discussion. And we are saying that when communicating with friends, how close in proximity is too close? Just right or too far? How about with acquaintances, business associates, strangers? How do you tell people when they are too close or too far? Oh, you are being asked, do you tell people when they are too close or too far? Or you just stand there, wait for them to be too close to you? Huh? Do you tell them? So that is a discussion forum that you're supposed to do. And then the lastly, we have quiz three. Quiz three, topic three. So there is a quiz three there that you're supposed to do. Unless there is a question, somebody had a question. Who was that? It was me, sir. I was asking about the attendance. What about the attendance? Oh, you want the password? That's a general comment. So today's password. Ah, by the way, those who are joining us for the first time, Bina, can you share the link for the WhatsApp group? Because from the WhatsApp group, I can see we are, we are how many? Let me check. Bina, share that link for people who have not joined us to join us, eh? the WhatsApp group. In this WhatsApp group, I can see we are 105. And from uh, this particular forum, I can see we are 107. So that means there are two people who are who don't know what is happening. So can you share that link? Yeah, it has been shared. Eh? Ensure that you click that link and join the group because that group will be used specifically for communication. You see group ya kusegenya lecturers na walimu. Ni kupate tukiwa na bi na tunakurusha inje na tunakusidi. Tunakufomia group yako tunakurusha uko. So don't you ever try to talk nasty things about lecturers in that group or bring business. Tuonyesha bi unauza nguo za mitumba hapo. Kakurusha inje na hizo nguo zako za mitumba. 